Hello everyone. I welcome you to the technical demo of the Informatica code generator. Before we move further, let's have a look at the roadmap that we will follow in this demo. First, we will look into what the tool or service does. Then we will specify what are the basic requirements to execute this service. Followed by what are the output files that are generated in this process. And lastly, we would go into a step by step process of execution and look into an example the purpose of informatica code generator arises from the fact that various businesses today need to process numerous types of file structures such as hl7 swift etc the complete process of parsing these source files and mapping the result to database tables can be cumbersome and time consuming the Informatica code generator automates the creation of Informatica power center workflow, Informatica data transformation parser, and even database SQL scripts using an user-friendly and editable Excel-based template. This template captures the source structure and source files type information. Presently, the tool handles three types of source files, delimited, fixed width, and unstructured. We would look into the details of each source type and the excel template later in the demo. Now moving on to what we need for the tool apart from the basic system requirements we would need the excel template and the data transformation project. The output files that are generated are xml file of the informatica power center workflow, sql script for the database table creation and the informatica data transformation parser project containing the TGP, CMW and the schema file for the parser. Now let's have a look at the steps that we need to follow to execute this tool. Among the steps to follow, the first step would be to fill in the template with the source structure, followed by deploying the data transformation project to the service DB folder and executing the project using the cm console command. Finally, we have to check the results in the new parser folder which is created in the same folder as the input file. Now we will look into each of these steps one by one for better understanding of the procedure. Going back to step 1, let's have a look into the template which we need to fill in. The template as mentioned earlier captures the source information. So here we see that there is a source file type which is a drop down and contains the values delimited, unstructured and fixed width. Now delimited is of two types, ordered and labeled. Here we capture the object name and this column is a fixed column. The other columns keep on changing as per the source file type. This captures whether the object has sub elements or not. In case of delimited, it captures the delimiter between the sub elements that is this. Then it captures whether it's a repeating object or not. And finally it captures the separator between two instances of the same element. Now we go deeper into each of the source file type that is delimited, unstructured and fixed width. Starting with the delimited ordered type, let's look at an example of such a file. If we consider the entries as mentioned in this, the equivalent text file that would elaborate this would be this one. We see here that in the first entry is employed, which implies that this whole group, this is the whole group and this is the employee. And the delimiter between sub elements is new line, which implies that each of this is one of the sub elements of an employee. And the separator between two instances of employee is 5 stars. Now if we go deeper and look into the details of the sub elements we will find that the first is the name as mentioned here 
then is the department now department is a repeating group and has the separator as comma and the delimiter between sub elements as colon similarly we would find this employee id subject and class subject has three other sub elements that is subject id subject name and chapter and we see an equivalent representation of the same here one important aspect of the delimited ordered file is the sequence in which the sub elements occur because this should be the same sequence in which it appears in the source file which implies that the first one should be the name the second one should be the department third one should be the employee and so on now moving on to delimited labeled the major difference between delimited labeled and delimited ordered is the sequence in which the sub elements appear in the source file here there is no such restriction that the sub elements should appear in the same order if we look at an example or delimited labeled file it would look something like this we see that this is basically the same file as before other than the labels each of the employee is identified by the label recg so there are two labels now the big major difference is in the order in which the sub elements occur here we see that the employee appears after the subject but in the second entry the employee occurs before so this is the major difference between delimited labeled and delimited order also we should note that we would we have the delimiter themselves and this is required since we need to know where we should stop looking for the department id and where we should start looking for the department name now moving on to the next type fixed width as the name suggests the object and its sub elements would be limited in size which needs to be mentioned in this column if you look at an example which depicts these entries this would be the example the first one is the name followed by department which is repeated twice followed by subject employee id subject and class one important thing to note here would be that whenever an object is repeating we have to mention the number of repetitions here and it's not imperative to mention the number of repetitions for the parent object that is the employee in this case here again the order of the sub elements is important and the sub elements must occur in the same order as in the source file now moving on to the next type that is unstructured this type tries to combine the functionalities of the delimited and the fixed width it uses the opening marker closing marker and its values the opening marker and the closing marker are of four types which are mentioned here text search pattern search new line search and offset search this would be clear if we look at an example looking at this we can see that the employee record is identified using the label emp which is a text next we see that the name is identified by a new line and also ident closed using a new line the department again is identified using a label dept 
An example of offset search would be the employee ID and if we go below then we see that this is the employee ID which is, needs to be captured which is quite similar to the fixed grid. Again in the case of unstructured the order in which they appear is important. For example the name should be followed by the department followed by the employee ID and so on. Now after we are done filling the excel template we move on to the next step that is deploying the data transformation project to the service db folder. Before we deploy the project we need to extract the code gen .rar to code gen. After the extraction we need to copy the code gen to the service db folder here. After I am done copying the folder to the, the service db folder, I would execute the cm console command from the command line. The cm console's format looks like this cm console followed by the service name which is code gen followed by minus f and the input file name. The input file in this case is the excel template so we would copy the location of the file and we are ready to execute it. After it's done executing we see that a new folder named new parser is generated so if we go inside we will see that the cmw file tgp file and pcxsd.xsd file is generated these three files constitute the data transformation parser project next we see the informatica workflow and the db table scripts Now the next step would be to check whether the project which has been generated is valid or not. For this we need to open data transformation and import it from there. I have already imported the parser and it looks like this. The parser was generated for the case of fixed width. So Let's take the example of the fixed width. The text width example that we considered earlier looked like this. And when we run this parser, which is the starting parser p employee, because employee was the root object or the parent object. So when we run it, we would get the output, that is the parsed output. We see that it parses it as two different employees who have different departments, employee id, subject, class and so on. Similarly, we can verify the db table scripts that it generates table for each of the entries there and also the informatica workflow we can further import it into the repository manager in any of the repositories in your system and verify that the whole flow works the informatica mapping for this workflow looks like this and to actually make this mapping work we need to deploy the project that we generated that is the new parser project to 
the server where Informatica mapping is running. After this, we see that we have concluded all the steps to follow and hence this concludes the presentation for the Informatica code generator. Thank you.